Monkeys are truly wonderful animals. They always capture our deep interest. Their intelligence is often clear to see. They remind us of ourselves in many ways. We see their playful actions and curious eyes. Monkeys live in many different parts of our world. They are a very diverse group of mammals. Studying them helps us understand the natural world better. When I first journeyed to Gombe, chimpanzees fascinated me. But the world of monkeys is also incredibly rich. Monkeys show amazing variety in their looks and actions. Some are very small, almost fitting in your hand. Others are much larger and also much stronger. They have adapted to live in dense green rainforests. They have also adapted to live in wide open savannas. Each single species has its own special way of life. There are so many different kinds of monkeys on Earth. Scientists group them to understand them much better. One very big way to group them is into two types. These are old world monkeys and new world monkeys. This grouping tells us a great deal about their history. It tells us where their ancestors came from long, long ago. It also helps to explain some of their biggest differences. Learning about these groups is like exploring family branches. Understanding these amazing monkeys is very important indeed. They are not just interesting creatures for us to watch. They play vital roles in their homes, their ecosystems. They help to spread seeds, which helps new forests grow. They are part of the food web as eaters and as food. By learning all about them, we can better protect them. Many different monkey species face serious threats today. Our knowledge can help ensure they thrive in the wild. The long story of monkeys began a very long time ago. This was many millions of years in the Earth's past. The continents we know today were not in the same places. This ancient geography played a very big role in monkey evolution. Early primates started to spread out across the world. Then the large continents began to slowly drift apart. This separation created a major split in the primate family. This is the true origin of old world and new world monkeys. One group of early primates found themselves in Africa and Asia. These two continents remained relatively connected to each other. This particular group evolved into what we now call Old World Monkeys. They adapted to the very diverse environments found in these lands. From the dense jungles to the wide open grasslands, they made homes. Their own evolutionary path took a very specific direction. This path led to all the special features we see in them today. They are a living testament to the power of adaptation over time. Another group of early primates ended up far away in South America. It is thought they might have rafted there on floating vegetation. This would have been a very remarkable journey indeed. They crossed the ancient Atlantic Ocean on these natural rafts. Once they arrived there, they were completely isolated from others. They began to evolve in a completely different way. This separate group became the New World Monkeys we know. Their new, isolated homes shaped their bodies and their behaviours. This significant geographical split is the real key to understanding. It helps us see why the two groups are different. Old World refers to the continents of Africa and Asia. This is where human civilization first developed in many important ways. New World refers to the continents of the Americas. These lands were new to European explorers much later in history. So the names themselves tell a story of ancient geography. This long separation led to the wonderful diversity of monkeys. New World monkeys live in Central and also South America. They also live in some parts of the country of Mexico. These are the only types of monkeys found naturally in the Americas. Their world is very often one of lush green rainforests. Think of the vast Amazon, a place truly teeming with life. These monkeys are perfectly suited to this kind of environment. They are a vibrant and essential part of these tropical ecosystems. Their many calls often fill the high forest canopy with sound. One of the most special things about many New World monkeys is their tail. Some, like the spider monkeys or the howler monkeys, have a prehensile tail. This means their tail can grip onto things very tightly. It works almost like an extra hand or a strong fifth limb. They can use this special tail to hold onto branches while they eat. They can even hang down from branches just by their tails. This is a wonderful adaptation for their life high up in the trees. It helps them move safely and also to find their food easily. Look very closely at the nose of any New World monkey. You'll certainly see something quite interesting about it. Their nostrils are usually quite wide apart from each other. They also tend to point outwards towards the sides of their face. Scientists call this a platyrine nose, meaning flat-nosed. This is a key physical feature that helps to identify them. It is very different from the noses of the old world monkeys. 
This particular nose shape is one of the first clear signs. New World monkeys are generally smaller in their overall body size. This is when compared to most of the Old World monkeys. There are some exceptions to this rule, of course, but many of them are quite small and very agile creatures. Think of the tiny marmosets and the delicate tamarinds. Some are so small they could easily fit in a human hand. This smaller size can be a big advantage in the dense forest. It allows them to move very quickly through the tangled branches. Life in the trees, or an arboreal life, truly defines New World monkeys. Most of them spend nearly all of their time in the forest canopy. They eat their food, sleep, and raise their young high above ground. This special lifestyle has shaped their bodies in many different ways. Their arms and legs are often long and quite slender. This helps them to leap easily from one branch to another. They are the true acrobats of the high forest canopy. Their amazing agility is always a great joy to watch. The prehensile tail, as we have mentioned, is a true marvel of nature. Not all of the New World monkeys actually have one of these tails. But for those that do, it is an absolutely essential tool for survival. The underside of the tip of this tail often has no fur. It has special skin ridges, much like our own human fingerprints. This gives them a much better and more secure grip on branches. Imagine swinging easily through the trees with such a wonderful tool. It offers them both support and crucial balance while moving. Their diet is also very closely linked to their tree-dwelling way of life. Many New World monkeys eat a lot of fruits, leaves, insects and nuts. Some of the smaller ones, like the marmosets, have very special teeth. These teeth allow them to easily gouge holes in tree bark. They then feed on the tree sap or gum that slowly oozes out. This is a very specialized and unique way of eating their food. It shows how they have found clever ways to survive in forest homes. They have carved out their own niche in the canopy. Because they live so high up, their social interactions also happen in trees. They communicate with each other through a variety of different calls. They also use scent marking to communicate with one another. Howler monkeys are very famous for their incredibly loud, booming calls. These powerful calls can travel for many miles through dense forest. This helps different groups to stay in contact with each other. It also helps them to clearly define their own territories. Their voices are a key part of the rainforest soundscape. Section 5. Old World Monkeys across Africa and Asia. Old World monkeys are found in a much wider range of places. They live all across the continent of Africa, south of the Sahara Desert. They also live in many different parts of the continent of Asia. This includes places like India, countries in Southeast Asia, and even Japan. Their habitats are therefore incredibly diverse and varied. Some of them live in tropical rainforests, similar to New World monkeys, but many others live in dry savannas or vast open grasslands. Some even manage to live in cold, snowy, mountainous regions. Unlike many of the New World monkeys, Old World monkeys do not have prehensile tails. Their tails can be very long or they can be quite short. Some species of Old World monkeys even have no tail at all. If they do have a tail, it is mainly used for balance, not for gripping. This is a very major difference between the two main groups of monkeys. So if you ever see a monkey using its tail like an extra hand, it is definitely not an Old World monkey you are observing. This reflects their different evolutionary paths and adaptations. Now. Look at the nose of an old world monkey if you get the chance. Their nostrils are usually quite close together on their face. They also point downwards, much like the nostrils of human beings. Scientists call this a catarine nose, meaning downward-nosed. This is another key physical feature that clearly distinguishes them. It is a simple and reliable way to tell them apart from their cousins. This downward-pointing nose is shared with apes and also with humans. It shows our much closer evolutionary relationship to Old World monkeys. Old World monkeys often have something else that is quite special. These are called ischial callosities, which are tough pads. They are hairless pads of thick skin located on their bottoms. These pads allow them to sit comfortably on branches for long times. They can also sit on rough ground without any discomfort. This is very useful, especially for those species that spend time on ground. Not all New World monkeys have these useful sitting pads. These pads are a clear adaptation to their varied lifestyles. Section 6. Old World Monkeys, Diverse Lifestyles on Land and in Trees 
While some old world monkeys are excellent climbers in the trees, many of them are also very comfortable living on the ground. Species like baboons and many macaques spend a lot of time foraging on the ground. This is quite different from most of the new world monkeys. Their bodies are often built for both climbing and for walking. This amazing versatility allows them to exploit a wider range of resources. They can find their food both in the trees and on the forest floor, or they can find it on the wide open plains of the savannah. Their hands and their feet are also very well adapted for their lives. They have opposable thumbs and also opposable big toes, much like humans. This gives them excellent dexterity and skill in using their hands. They can manipulate small objects with a great deal of precision. They can pick up tiny seeds or groom each other very carefully. This ability to grasp things is crucial for finding enough food. It is also very important for their many social interactions. Their hands are vital tools for survival and for social bonding. Many old world monkeys also have special cheek pouches inside their mouths. These pouches are like little storage bags located inside their cheeks. When they find a large amount of food all at once, they can quickly stuff it into these useful cheek pouches. Then they can move away to a safer place to eat it later on. This is very useful if there are predators nearby watching them. It is also very helpful if there is a lot of competition for food. It's a clever way to make the most of any good food find. Their social structures can be very complex and also quite fascinating. Baboons, for example, live in large groups called troops. These troops have strict social hierarchies or ranking systems. There are dominant males and also dominant females in the group. An individual's rank can determine their access to food and to mates. Macaques also have very intricate and interesting social lives. Living in these organized groups provides good protection from predators. It also helps them in finding and sharing information about food. Section 7. Spot the difference comparing primate groups. Let's put these two interesting groups of monkeys side by side now. The most obvious difference is, of course, where they naturally live. New world monkeys are only found in the Americas, as we said. Old world monkeys are found across Africa and also across Asia. This geographical separation is the real starting point for all other differences. It means they evolved in complete isolation from each other. This happened for many, many millions of years of Earth's history. This led to the many unique adaptations we see in each group. Noses are a very clear visual cue to tell them apart quickly. New World monkeys have those flat noses with nostrils pointing sideways. Think of a shape that is flat and quite wide across. Old World monkeys, on the other hand, have narrow noses. Their nostrils point downwards, much more like our own human noses. Tails are another very big and important difference between them. Some New World monkeys have those useful prehensile tails for grasping. No Old World monkeys at all have this special feature. Their dental formulas, the number and type of teeth, also differ slightly. New World monkeys generally have three premolars on each side of jaw. This is in both their upper jaw and their lower jaw. Old World monkeys, as well as apes and humans, typically have only two. This might seem like a very small and minor detail to notice, but it is a consistent difference that scientists use for classification. Also, Old World monkeys often have those ischial callosities, the sitting pads. These are less common or absent in New World monkeys. In terms of their general body size, New World monkeys are usually smaller. The smallest monkeys in the entire world are New World monkeys. These are the tiny pygmy marmosets, which are truly delightful. Old World monkeys include some much larger and more robust species. Examples include the large mandrels and the powerful baboons. Behaviorally, New World monkeys are almost exclusively arboreal, living in trees. Many Old World monkeys, however, are comfortable both in trees and on the ground. This difference in habitat use has shaped them distinctly. Section 8. Monkey Societies and What They Eat Monkey social lives are incredibly fascinating to observe and study. Many different species in both groups live in social groups. These groups can vary a lot in their size and their structure. Some New World monkeys, like the gentle titty monkeys, form monogamous pairs. The male in these pairs often helps to care for the young. This is quite touching and interesting to observe in the wild. Others, like the active squirrel monkeys, live in much larger groups. These larger groups can be more fluid in their membership. Old World monkeys often have very complex and layered social systems. Baboon troops, as we have mentioned before, have clear hierarchies. 
An individual monkey's rank within the group can change over time. Grooming is a very important social activity for many monkeys. It helps to keep their fur clean and free of parasites. But it also plays a crucial role in strengthening social bonds. It can help to reduce tension and conflict within the group. Macaques also show very intricate and fascinating social behaviours. Diets are very diverse in both monkey groups, as you might expect. This diversity reflects their different habitats and the foods available. New World monkeys often focus on fruits, insects and leaves. These are foods typically found high in the forest canopy. The specialized gum feeding of marmosets and tamarinds is quite unique. Howler monkeys are primarily leaf eaters, which are called folivores. Their digestive systems are specially adapted to break down tough plant material. They must spend a lot of time resting to digest food. Old World monkeys also have a wide variety of different diets. Leaf-eating colobus monkeys in Africa have specialized multi-chambered stomachs. These stomachs work like fermentation vats, helping to digest leaves. Baboons are well known for being omnivores, eating almost anything. They eat roots, grasses, fruits, insects, and even small animals. Macaques are also very adaptable and flexible eaters, like baboons. Some Japanese macaques, often called snow monkeys, even wash their food. They wash it in water before eating, showing their intelligence. Section 9. Our primate cousins, their role and our responsibility. Monkeys are much more than just interesting animals for us to study. They play very crucial and important roles in their ecosystems. Many fruit-eating monkeys are extremely important seed dispersers. When they eat a fruit, they often swallow the seeds whole. Later on, they deposit these seeds in different parts of the forest. This happens when they move around and excrete the seeds. This helps new trees to grow in new places far and wide. In this way, monkeys are like the gardeners of the forest. They are also an integral part of the complex food web. They are prey for a variety of other animals in their habitat. These predators can include large birds like eagles, big cats and snakes. Monkeys themselves are also predators of insects and some small animals. This natural balance is very important for a healthy ecosystem. Their presence often indicates a thriving and healthy environment. When monkey populations start to decline, it can be a warning sign. It can mean the entire ecosystem is in serious trouble. Sadly, many different monkey species around the world are facing threats. Loss of their natural habitat is a very major problem for them. Forests are being cut down for agriculture, logging and human settlements. This means that monkeys have less space to live and find food. They are also sometimes hunted by people for food or for the pet trade. These combined pressures are causing many monkey populations to shrink. Some species are now critically endangered and risk extinction. It is a very critical time for monkey conservation efforts. Conservation efforts are thankfully underway to protect these wonderful primates. This includes working hard to protect their precious forest habitats. It also involves working closely with local human communities. We need to find sustainable ways for people and monkeys to coexist. Breeding programs in reputable zoos can also help some endangered species. By learning more about monkeys and the threats they face, we can all help. Supporting conservation organizations is one very good way to contribute. Their future, like the future of so much wildlife, is in our hands.